All right. Welcome everybody to the third meeting of Game Development Club. So, first things first, announcements. So, this weekend's workshop, we are doing a coding, intro to coding in Unity workshop. And by the end of it, you will have a cube runner that you coded. Um, has everybody played? A cube? Does everybody know what that is? It's like cubes. You go forward, you try and not hit them. It's pretty simple, but we'll be setting that up. So if you're interested, if, if you made it last week, great. If you didn't make it last week and you want to catch up, we'll have the workshop online on YouTube by Saturday so you can follow through it and do it alongside the video as well, whatever you want to do. So uh, the second thing, as always, we will have a time at the beginning of the meeting that you can show off a game you've been working on, an idea you have, anything, and try and get people to collaborate, just show it off, do whatever. We always have a time for that. So if you're interested in that, let somebody know on the exec team, either on Discord or before the meeting or the week before or whenever, and we'll give you a time to go up. I think we actually have one today. So, um, And then the other thing is we also have t-shirts from last year selling these for five dollars. Uh, we can't guarantee any sizes because these are the leftovers from last year, but if you're interested in buying a t-shirt, feel free to come up. We'll be selling these for the next few meetings at least. So you don't necessarily need to get it today. First <laughs> time so now that everybody saw it. <laughs> okay. Um, I've kind of been working on this for the past couple of weeks. It's, uh, oh. Hello. Can you hear me? It's just for the camera. Oh, okay. Hi, camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's, it's kind of similar to the game uh, Snake Pass, which is a recent uh, title that came out, except more, I don't know, isometric, but kind of a 3D snake, kind of a idea. Right now it's just the physics, but like you pick up a thing and you grow and then whenever you're not supported by your body you fall. Oh. It's really rudimentary physics right now. I was just spent a lot of time trying to get it to the feel and look smooth. The camera is the uh, Cinemachine add-on, which is a free add-on from Unity and really easy to use and you can find tons of tutorials online. If you're interested in that, it makes like smoothing and following a lot easier. And then, kind of for the prototyping, the maps that I've been using, instead of like dragging and dropping um, like cubes everywhere, I use uh, what I learned in the workshop from a couple weeks ago with Magic of Voxel. You can import Magic of Voxel files as well. You can export them as OBJs and then import them directly into Unity, like really easily, just kind of a drag and drop thing. And then the scale of them, each like voxel and magic voxel is equivalent to like one Unity unit out of the box. So like since my snake is one Unity unit, I didn't have to scale anything. And it just like fits right on it. So that's kind of what I've been working on. If you are interested in the code, you can like talk to me after the meeting. I'm going to get like a uh, GitHub something set up so people can just fork it if they want, are interested. So, yeah, that's about as far as I've gotten on it. I'm thinking about making it like a puzzle platformer kind of a thing. I'm not sure the direction that I want to go with it, but that's this is it. That's awesome. That looks really cool. Thank you. I can definitely see the inspiration from like Snake Pass, yeah. like for sure. Yeah. Do you guys have you guys seen Snake Pass? It's yeah, that's really sweet though. And that's that's interesting that it kind of takes ideas from like regular Snake, yeah, with getting longer, but then in 3D space. Yeah. What? Oh, is this your is this your uh, mouse? All right, thanks. Thanks for the tribute to the club. Appreciate it. So we're talking about backgrounds. So no, we're not. I don't understand this at all. 
So we're talking about PowerPoint today. <laughs> yeah, true. I mean, it's not PowerPoint, but. How to use multiple screens. How not to use multiple screens, exactly. <laughs> There you go. All right, so yeah, that's announcements. Uh, actually, as one more announcement real quick. Uh, if you signed up to be a chair position, we'd be announcing those after the meeting online, not here. So if you applied for one of those, hype. Be ready. And we'll, we'll give you more info on that with uh, the messages. So today, I wanted to talk about making your first game. So who in here has not made a game before? Who does not have a start, a game with a start and a finish that you're proud of? Who does not have a game like that yet? Be proud, be super proud, it's, it's, it's fine. All right, great, great. I love to see some people who haven't because this is where you can get started. So we're just going to run through some things to th think about when you're making your first game because making your first game is a really daunting task. You don't really know where to start. You don't know where to find resources. You don't know if you want to work with other people, yada, 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 yada. So one of the first things is kind of a depressing one, but you need to know your limits when you're making your first game. If you have not programmed before, do not make a really complicated game mechanics-wise. Do not make 3D Snake. That's probably not going to be that easy if you haven't done programming before. It's probably going to be a bit beyond your, your scope. Make something simple. It's not bad to make something simple. This picture over here is my first game, Wowie Zowie, where you are a red square and you go through a maze and you grab the keys and it was written in Visual Basic, which you don't make games in, so, oh boy. So, I mean, like, no, no, I'm proud of that. Yeah, it looks like garbage. Yeah, there's not much to do in it. Yeah, the screen flickers because I redrew the whole screen every frame like an idiot. But it's fine because I started with something small and I learned from it. I went through the whole process start to finish. And by the end, when I made, came to my second game, I could do it much, much easier. And I knew where to go with it. And then I learned something new for the second one. And that's kind of the iterative process point is that making games is not you make your big game, boom, you're done. You are a game developer. It is a, it is a process where you take the first game and it's kind of garbage. And that's good, that's fine. And then you take the second game and it's better. You've built upon your skills, you've built maybe even upon the first game. And then the third game, hopefully, is even better. And hope, I mean, ideally, you make better and better games. Obviously, you know, you can <coughs> sometimes go backwards a little bit if your idea isn't the greatest, Mass Effect. Um, <laughs> but the point is, is that as you go, you get better and better. So it's not bad that your first game isn't great. Which is kind of the last point, I skipped ahead a little bit, that no one makes the greatest game ever their first time. If you look at people who have made really great games, a lot go and try and find one of their game jam games or one of their first games because you will see a very very big gap between this amazing game that everyone's bought and played and this actual piece of garbage that doesn't even run well like that's that's just how it goes and that's fine and then the third point was save your good ideas for later this is really important if you have this master game in your mind that you know is going to be the best? Because I'm, I'm sure a lot of people, how many people have a game that they know they want to make in the future that they think is pretty kicking? Okay, yeah, a lot of people. Don't make that your first game. Please don't make that your first game. Because you will make it, and it will be far worse than you wanted it to be, because it's your first game. And then you'll come to your second game, and you'll say, oh, I want to take a break from that. And you'll come to your third game, and you'll say, ah, I don't know, I, I, I want to give that more time. Then you come to your fourth game and you say, okay, I'm coming back to it. And then you go back to it and then you realize it's written like garbage because it was your first game. It's put together horribly. And so then you decide to restart on it completely and then you run into the, the horrible roadblock of I've already done this, what is my motivation to doing it again? And then you never end up actually going back and making that good game you had. Take an idea that's not 
the greatest. You don't have to jump with your, your life dream as your first game. Start with something simple, something that you can basically just use as practice. It doesn't mean that you have to discard it. Doesn't mean, okay, now I've done my practice, trash it and move on to my real first game. No, shitty maze with red cube, square, not even cube, is like, yeah, that wasn't a good idea, but I'm proud of that and I will always put that as my first game, even though I could lie and show one of my much better looking games and say it's my first. I'm not going to because I'm proud of that. So, before we go any further, I need to talk about scope. How many of you have heard the term scope creep when talking about game development? Yeah, it's really, 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 really important that you pay attention to your scope when you're making a game. So first of all, what is scope? Scope is basically everything that is going into your game. It is all a list of the features, a list of the artwork that you're putting in, a list of all of the things that are going into your game. Scope creep is when you realize as your project goes on that, ooh, this feature would fit really well. Ooh, this feature would put, this feature would fit really well. Ooh, a piece of candy. Ooh, a piece of candy. And then you just keep going and your project gets so big that you can't manage it and it just becomes an absolute mess. That is enough knives. You don't need that many tools on that Swiss Army knife. I don't know, I think it's enough. <laughs> where's the where's the mini welding torch? I don't even see it. This is a, this is great. actually it might actually have that. <laughs> well, eh. my point is my point is pay attention to what you're actually putting into your game and set really really clear goals before like at the start of your game when you're coming up with the idea, write down what you want your game to have and write down I'm gonna leave two features that I don't have yet that I'll probably come up with later and put in. Write down something specific and stick to it. Even if you come up with some idea that would make your game amazing, finish your game. It's really, really important that you finish your game. I don't know how many, I mean, okay, who here has made a game before, first of all? Okay, who here has made multiple games? I'm assuming probably a lot of the same people. Okay, how many, how many pr games do you think you have that are just like the, the first half of the game development process and then just like nothing else because you realize you didn't want to finish it and then it just, it just sort of stopped? Definitely more than I've made. <laughs> yeah, that's, yes, I have a lot of those. A lot of, that, that is a common thing where you get going with a project and you lose your steam because school comes up or you, know, you lose interest in it and then you just have this project that's sort of like a quarter finished or a half finished and then it just sort of disappears and doesn't do anything. That's not good practice because getting experience with game development is experience through the whole thing. Start, middle, and end. Because if you don't finish your game, it will be harder in the future to finish your games. If you make a thousand games and you don't finish any of them, and then you come to that thousand and first game, and then you try and finish it, you try and put it all together, you won't do it well. It doesn't matter how many games you've almost finished. You need to finish something. So that kind of leads into my next point of follow through. That you need to get your game to the point that you are happy with it and start cleaning it up. So. When I say clean it up, I mean put in some of the things that you think are kind of, kind of stupid, but you know, every game has. Put a menu in your game. I don't know how many people have video games that they make and it just starts at level one. Or they just don't have a tutorial in it. Put that in your game. It doesn't take that long and it makes games so much nicer to play and to look at. At game jams, I think, uh, in the past, we've done like a scoring system for winning prizes, and we always put free points that you get points if you have a menu, if you have a credits screen, if you have a how to play, and there was one, I think if you published it so that we could see it. But yeah, we always had these free points for doing these things because you should have those in your games. If you're showing the game to somebody and you send it to them online, and you don't put a how to play, they might miss entire features of your game. They might miss the fact that you can restart the level. 
That was in the tutorial. I know. <laughs> okay, your, your players also have to be able to read, which is kind of a problem sometimes. But another point of cleaning up your, your, uh, your game is to take out all test levels. This sounds like it's kind of silly, but I know a lot of my games that I haven't that, that, that I've put together, I go back and I play through after I've built it, and I'm pretty happy with it, and I realize that I left a debug level at the start where all you have to do is get to the end of the room, but it's got all of the features of the game you know, spread out as I was testing them. It's like, that, that, that's not a good first level. That's a terrible first level. You just spoiled the entire experience of the game, and they have no tutorial now. The tutorial's after the first level. So it sounds silly, but go through, your, go through your game and make sure that only the parts that are necessary and only the parts that are good, parts you want, are in it. And then third, have a clear beginning and end. Have a first level, have a final level. If you're not doing levels, have some objective. Let the player know when they're done. My maze game, the goal was you would do it in a certain as fast as you can, in a certain time. So the end was when you finish the maze, but the idea was you'd keep doing it to get faster and faster. If you have a game where your goal is just to get a high score before you die, make that clear and make it so that that's the end of the game. Don't just leave it open-ended and whenever they feel like stopping, that's when they stop. And if you're ever not sure on whether or not you should have a tutorial for a certain part or if you need to clarify more about the ending, just have someone else play it and don't tell them how to play it. Just let them play it. You can watch, but don't sit there and say, oh, you jump by pressing space because that's how you get an idea for whether or not something's intuitive and doesn't need explaining, or if it's really easy to, to just write a little text box and say, hey, space is jump, R is restart. Up is jump. <laughs> hey, both are in there. That's good. Keyboard. That's an improvement. That's good. No, from the start. Yeah. Never played it. Oh, on keep well, is it on controller yet? No. <sighs> Anyways, uh, and then finally, after you've cleaned up your game, after you're sure it's, it's, it's fine as it is, then you just need to finish it. So the idea is you have a final version of the game, a version that you build. Most game engines or you know, languages you're using have some way to build it as this is the final, this is a version that you can just run. So build it and have that be the final version. Have that, take a step away from it afterwards is basically what I'm saying. That don't just sit there and keep developing it. Don't get into development hell where you keep coming back to it and adding something else. It, that kind of goes with scope creep, that you just want to have a fi final version at some point that you can say, okay, I'm done. That's over. And then finally, public, decide what you want to do with your game. Since it's your first game, you might not want to publish it. You might not think it's the greatest. That's fine. If you don't want to publish it, show it to people. Because I guarantee, as your first game, even if it's just Pong, show it to somebody. Because I, people, will be, I, people who don't know game development will be impressed no matter what you show them. All right? If you tell someone, I made this, they'll say, wow, no matter what you do. It doesn't matter if it's the greatest thing or if it's Pong. It's fine. So, you know, go out there and share it with people. And if you really don't want to, if you really just hate your game, you know, lock it up. But don't delete it. I wouldn't delete it because it's always fun to go back and see where you came from. Um, I had something else. Eh. Anyways, finally, as I kind of touched on before, game development, that experience is start to finish. Start, middle, and end. If you skip out on the end, if you don't finish your game, you're not going to get experience doing that part of game development. And then you're going to run into trouble later when you try to, get, when you try to finish a game, you're gonna have trouble finishing it later because you didn't get that experience the first time. So, now just some general tips. So first of all, you do not have to work alone. A lot of people think, oh, it's my first game. I need to make it my first game. That, you don't have to do that. I know a lot, a lot of people do that, but you do not have to work on your first game by yourself. If you're, in, if you're interested in artwork in video games, for instance, 
your first game can, it will probably be with somebody else, and that's fine. You can have a first game that you worked on with somebody. That's not illegal. Some people think that, or seem like they think that, but it's totally not. And then the other thing is, not only do you not have to work alone as a person, you can also find plenty of resources online. You can, I mean, if, you, if you're, how many people in the room use what I call programmer art? Which is, you're a programmer and your artwork is pretty garbage, so you just kind of throw in like, eh. And it just doesn't, it, it, it doesn't matter, the mechanics are, I'm gonna raise my hand. I'm 100% guilty of programmer art. <laughs> but that's why, I get Tanner to do it. No, I get. <laughs> that's why I get other. That's why I look for other people's stuff. So, like, if you go online, there are tons of places to find free assets, free artwork, free music, free sound effects, free all sorts of things. So, absolutely, jump out and go there. Don't feel like you need to do the whole game. Start like encompassing the whole game. You need to do the whole process, start to finish. But you don't need to put together every single component. You can, get, you can get other people's work off of that, assuming you have the right license. And especially for your first game, you can find so much of this stuff online. Like, uh, Unity has a great asset store. I know my, one of my first games, I went online and I just like, I wanted to add money in and so I added like pixel art, like gold coins and I found a great sprite sheet with it and all they said was, hey, add my name in the credits and you can use this. And so I just said like special thanks to this random person that I've never met. <laughs> but to random schmucko number five. <laughs> yep, and no one saw those credits, so. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't even have to know. <laughs> yeah. And then finally, you can always build off of something else. A lot of people do this and then say, oh, that's not really my first game, and then you know, convince themselves that that's not the. You're allowed to do this. What I mean is, uh, how many of you have done, for instance, the Unity Rollerball tutorial? Anybody? Because that's a great tutorial. Basically, it just teaches you how to make a ball roll around and like collect sort of coin objects, and that's about it. I have seen a bunch of different games that took that and went somewhere with it. That they made an obstacle course where you had to get to the end without dying, or I'm. I'm like 90% sure Sanic Ball based itself off of that in some way. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they just took the tutorial the whole way with that. Has anybody heard of that? No? All right, I'm talking. Sadly. Somebody, somebody's heard of it. <laughs> it's, okay. it's a pretty good meme. It's pretty great. Um, but yeah, feel free to absolutely just work off of a tutorial and expand upon it and make it sort of your own thing. That's not illegal. That's not bad. That's a good idea if you don't know where to start. And then finally, ask for help. How, how many people do we have today, Nate? Did you, did you count our attendance yet? You just, okay. A lot, there's a lot of people in here. I can guarantee you can find some people who can help you with what you're doing. Maybe not get involved with your game, but help you with something. If you're confused about how to do some mechanic in your game, how to program it, come to the workshops, ask somebody there. If you're confused about, or if you're, if you're looking for some help making some artwork because you don't have much experience with it, but you wanna make the artwork, talk to, throw some messages in the Discord uh, server on like the creative channel. I guarantee a bunch of different people will pop up and offer help and resources and all that. So, you know, a group like this is a great, is a great place to find help for that kind of stuff. And you can always go online. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of subreddits that will just throw advice at you and throw help to you if you ask for it. So, point number two. Very important. Set aside some time. I know you're all in college. I know you're all busy. If you want to make games, you need to set some time aside to do it. I know playing video games is even more fun than making video games a lot of the time. I get it. I get it probably too well. But you need to set aside some time. You need <coughs> to make some game dev time that you sit down and you work on it for a bit. If you want to work on a game you know, throughout the semester or throughout whatever, if you're interested in that, you need to set aside some time. A great opportunity to set aside some time, time to chill a little bit, is game jams. Those are the 48-hour events that we hold where you make a game from scratch. And that is a great time to sort of put everything away 
and just work on game dev, work on making a game. I would not suggest getting in the habit of making game jams your only time to make games. I know that a lot of people sort of fall into that trap where they make a game jam game and then they say, oh, that was a lot of work. I had to take a break from this for a bit. And then they take a whole semester break and come back at the next game jam. And then it just sort of repeats and they never really work on their own on something. So I would not necessarily get in the habit of only working at game jams, but game jams are a great time to make your first game, make your second game, make your X amount of games. That's fine. Game jams are a great opportunity to do that, but the point is find some time that you designate as your game dev time. And if you're having a hard time getting started on your first game and you show up to the game jam, which is a great time for that, uh, you can always continue working on it. Even if other people don't want to work on it afterwards, you can find or kind of take ownership of the, the project afterwards and keep building off of what you have there because you will have something finished at the end of a game jam that you can work off of and continue to build upon. Yeah. When might be our next game jam? Whoa, crazy. When is our next game jam? That is a good question. Uh, our next game jam is October 27th? 26th. Yep, it's the weekend of October 26th. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Be there or be... Circle. Be circle. <laughs> yeah, sure. Be, be there, yeah. That's simple. Huh? What? There's a joke. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Um, and, then fire, and then for the third point, very important, is pick something you're interested in. This sounds a bit silly because you probably are thinking to yourself, why would I, pick a, why would I make a game about something I'm not interested in? Regardless, pick something that you know you'll be interested in through and through until the end of the project. If you pick something that seems interesting at first because somebody told you you should try it and then you lose interest in it, it will be really hard to finish your game. So just make sure you pick something that you can stay focused on and that will keep motivating you throughout the whole thing. And yeah, it sounds kind of silly, but I've got, I've got multiple games in my, in my backlog of games that I just did not keep interest in throughout. So pick, pick something that you know you'll, you'll stay interested in. And finally, and finally, be proud of your first game. Very important. I love that maze game. I found that yesterday. I thought I'd lost that forever, and I found it yesterday looking through stuff for, for pictures. So I am proud of that game, and I am happy that I found it, because I'm going to show that as my first game forever when I you know, totally end up becoming a super successful game developer in the future. <laughs> you heard it here first. Um, that, will be, that will be always known as my first game, and I'm going to be proud of that. And you should make something that you're proud of. It doesn't have to be amazing. You saw the maze. That was a terrible pun. I think it was a good pun. I didn't even know it was a pun, so. <laughs> but it's got to be good. Shut up. <laughs> um, but it doesn't have to be an amazing game. The point is just be proud of it. Be proud that you started something and that you have somewhere to work off of afterwards. So. Now what I want to move into is sort of just an open group discussion where I want people to share, if you have any. What's up? I have two questions. What's up? Uh, one, what kind of mindset should we go into making our first game? Like what should be our motivation? And what kind of concepts make for good first games? Money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a motivation. Um, I mean, your motivation, motivations change different, uh, depending on people, you know, I mean, some people make them just because they're interested in the game development process, some people make them because, for money, they're just trying to, I mean, I know a lot of App Store games uh, seem like people's first games, but then make a ton of money, which I'm not exactly sure how that works, but it does. Um, so make an app. Yeah, so that kind of that kind of depends. But then, yeah, like we like we kind of said, uh, good concepts for first games are stuff that's really simple. So something that you know that you, like keep your limits known, I guess. 
that you should pick something that you can feasibly do. Like a 2D platformer or, or a maze game. Is that a genre? Yes. What is it? Maze, maze, maze game is a genre? Labyrinth. Uh, is it? Amazing game, that's what it is. <laughs> so we're going to be holding elections for our new vice president uh, <laughs> any second now. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, it's just something, I would just pick something that, if you know, if you haven't done any programming before, pick something that's mechanically simple. If you are an expert programmer, but you've never jumped into game dev, you can pick something that's much more difficult, I guess, to get for most new people. Um, if you're not doing uh, programming, obviously, like as an artist or a musician, you know, finding other people and getting that kind of stuff. And pick something that won't be so complicated artwork-wise if you're doing artwork and you haven't really done this before for games. Basically, the idea is you just want to start simple. So, any other questions about making your first game? By the way... Is this like talk with your neighbor or like shout out to This is like shout out. So, pressure's on. Um, but yeah, a good opportunity actually for making your first game is the workshops that we hold. We go through a lot of the basics of you know, how to put together a game. I know last week we had some people making some pretty cool 3D platformer levels and messing with that. So you know, if, if you don't know where to start, maybe start there. Totally not chilling for our workshops, but kind of am. So yeah, so I guess if you have ideas, if you have an idea that you want to do for your first game, I just want to hear people sort of shout out ideas and then I want to talk about is that, I want to run through the list of is it feasible, are you interested in it, yada, yada, yada. Um, and then also people who have, I, I guess we could start with this, people who have already made their first game, what was it and what did you learn from it? I know there's plenty of people who have made their first game. I'll start. I made my maze game. Uh, I learned a lot of things. I learned programming. <laughs> How yeah, did it take? Uh, that one took a while. That one took probably a couple weeks at two or three hours a day of getting that working, which is probably more than it's more. I mean, I could definitely do it faster now, I swear. Um, <laughs> maybe in visual basic. <laughs> Might take longer than before, actually. But, but I, I learned a lot about. Um, the mindset of going into a game. I kind of threw that together with, without really understanding what would be the objective, what would be anything. I just said, I want something to be grid-based, set up a grid system. I said they should be able to move, set up the movement system, and said, oh, maybe they can grab some things. So it really wasn't planned out well. In my second game, my second game was really bad. My third game, <laughs> my third game, I had learned from that, and I made a game that was very, that I, I had planned out a lot ahead of time, and it really shows because the game actually works based off of that. It was a... Is it the Mario one? Yeah, it was like a 2.5D Mario kind of game where you... Uh, it's a strange looking game. You got, you got a power-up that was Mountain Dew, <laughs> and it gave you shades. It made Snoop Dogg show up on the screen. Uh, you had a blunt. It was, it was a horrible meme game, but it was fun, and it was, it was definitely built start to finish. Did it so. have Shrek at the end? Hmm? Did it have Shrek on at the end? No, there was, I didn't put Shrek in, unfortunately. Oh, so it's not nice. I did, okay, it was done at a high school class, and I did put a weird picture of my instructor in a hidden room that he wouldn't find that other people in the class could, so. <laughs> I'm still proud of it. <laughs> so, did anybody else have, just to start that, I know you, and you, and you definitely have something. Uh, my first game, well, okay. I have an unfinished first game <laughs> before that. Uh, my first game that I originally started was actually also in a high school class. It was just kind of like you start learning programming and I'm like, oh, if statements, those are a thing. I, I bet I could make like a, a, a game off of this where you just like ask a question, like if they press one, if they press two, if they press three, and like you display text for them, like what those three options are. 
So just kind of a choose your own adventure type game. So I started making that at the beginning of my high school class uh, with just if statements, which is not a good idea if you're not a programmer. Um, as I went on in the game, I realized what for loops were. It made it a lot easier. So the code changed. And it, this is all in Java and like you would just see it on the terminal. But then as it went on, I got better and better and I could apply what I was learning in class to an uh, actual project, and then at the end of it, I had a little bit of a game where you could, uh, you had like a menu and you could scavenge around and like punt for stuff, and then you could go back to your menu by pressing like one or something, and if you pressed nine, it would quit, and it, it was really basic. It was all just text based. But as a programmer, that's all I knew how to do, and as a bad programmer. <laughs> but it was something, and I could show something for it at the end of it. What'd you learn? What'd you learn out of that, I guess? Um, I learned all kinds of coding and how, like, like I said, it was a really great way to apply what I was learning in class because I don't pay much attention in class. <laughs> and I, I got to actually put that into a project, which is very important. I, like I said, I learned basic coding off of that, and I learned kind of the basic, like, like you said, you need to plan it out a little bit beforehand, because otherwise you're just kind of asking random questions, and you keep trying to go back and add a, in more things to what you did before, and you you kind of have to watch out for that scope creep. Uh, so end up having to cut it off at some point and finish it. Quick, quick anecdote about scope creep. The reason my second game was really bad is because I started with a 2D game and then scope creeped an entire 3D game as the second level and then never went anywhere else with it because it was basically just two games separated by a level barrier. So yeah, definitely make sure that you, you stick with the idea and don't add on too that many features. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I went off the rollerball tutorial, made it 2D, and then switched to a whole 3D platformer halfway through. So first person view at that. Yeah, first person. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. So yeah, pay attention to your scope. Keep things keep a clear goal, definitely. Yeah. So my first game, uh, I stopped doing it because I learned what Unity was. But uh, it was using Java with the graphical user interface. And I used a YouTube turn tutorial to figure out how to make a game engine for it. So I've written a game engine before. Bad. <laughs> OK, it's all right. But that's mainly because it's called the all right game engine. But uh, it just draws squares to the screen. And you can click on squares on the screen. So. I got mouse pointers in there now, so I mean, that's yeah. Huge. <laughs> How long did that take you to do? I uh, don't know. It was summer before freshman freshman year, so anywhere from all of summer to like ten hours. No, that's a really big yeah. time difference. <laughs> it took a billion years or three seconds, huh? YouTube videos probably got through in like two hours, but then spent another two hours trying to realize what I actually had written. So, <laughs> yeah. And I did frame rate in there, and I didn't know what that was. So. <laughs> yeah. Unity, thank you. Do you have one? I, 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 I can try. <laughs> I can't speak very well right now. Uh, my first game, oh god, this is awful. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the troll from the depths is here to tell you uh, my first game, they followed Sean Spalding's game maker tutorial um, on how to make a uh, side uh, shooting, like just basically a Galaga clone. And then I added stuff onto it to make it so that you can move all around the screen and it would follow, like it would follow your mouse pointer, like whichever way you're looking. Like you held your mouse, it would, go to, it would point towards it. Um, I never actually completely finished it because I couldn't figure out how to get it to show. How, I think I couldn't figure out how to get it to shoot while I was doing that. Since I, would have, I had to use a completely different shooting 
thing than what he did in the tutorial. Um, I think I did eventually figure that out, but that was after I started working on my second game. So, how long? How long did that take? Would you say? Um, oh, frick. It was like um, I was in. I don't even remember. It was, I was in high school. So, uh, it was like just on every so often uh, after school. Probably like um, I like didn't work on it very heavily, but like probably overall like a year or so. To it. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of you are noticing that there's a lot of tutorials that sort of became their first game. So if, you, if you're looking for a place to start, that is not a bad place to start. Definitely. That is, I mean, I mean, the workshops are kind of tutorials that you can work off of. So if you want to just take some of, the tu some of the workshop material and just go with it, feel free to. It's, it's certainly not licensed, that's for sure. Yeah, there's tutorials where you can go up and talk to the guy making the tutorial and be like, hey, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Basically, I mean, I do hear that a lot at workshops of, yeah, wait, what the fuck? Because usually Unity's doing something goofy, but yeah. <laughs> So, did anybody else have a first game? Yeah. Because on my first game, really than everyone else's, I made mine an RPG maker. You remember the VXA stuff, or MV? But I called it when I got the gods on uh, Dropbox, too. And I had never played an RPG maker beforehand, so I didn't realize you could make multiple maps. So, I had everything on one map for the first half of the game. And at one point, when you're supposed to be your first partner, you can go to the and break and go up to like where you go and split off to your whole team immediately. It was it was pretty bad, and the balancing is horrible. You can't take any of the mobs on at all unless you're max level. <laughs> you go into a fight with three plants, they sleep you. They spam sleep you, or you couldn't do a thing to kill them. So what did you learn from that game? How to balance and not get anything overpowered, <laughs> and that uh, you that uh, you don't have to jam everything on one map. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, you have a lot of power as a game developer. It's kind of like when they give you those, those custom maps. Like, go make your custom map, and you start off making like a normal map, and then all of a sudden you just start like making as many guys on this side and as many guys on that side, so you can just have a big fight or something, and then you realize, wait. I didn't make a, a cool map, I just made a giant fight that's nothing, which can kind of, it's kind of like your game idea where it's like, yeah, I, I got to play with all these different things, and uh, it's cool to see what I can do, but after you have that experience, then you might want to go back and actually like plan it out and decide, uh, like, like you said, balance. Uh, Balance it. Yeah. So it makes a there difference. Was one of the boss the final one was the hardest in the game. Because I recently replayed through it. It's such an overpowered technique where it would hit you and like you're still 2,000 you know, it's health. It's like, Jesus, I had trouble playing it. I had, I had all my characters look max level through little like, dev cheats. <laughs> it's like, geez, I can't take this on, it's too strong. <laughs> that's, that's something that's really easy to fall into, is when you beat a part of your game, and then you say, okay, great, now I'm just going to skip ahead so I can play through the rest of the game since I've beaten it. Uh, have you guys ever heard of I Want to Be the Guy, I think? Yeah. Oh, there, yeah, yeah. There, have you heard of the Kirby jump? Uh, the flow? Or is that yeah. I want to be the Bashi? I think it's all the Bashi and yeah. the Castlevania era with the eyeball. Yeah, there's there's what, something. I, I'm I'm pretty sure there's a Kirby in there something. But there's a Kirby and there's a, you have a one frame window to jump over the Kirby. And the reason it's like that is because the developer tried the first time, got it, and said it's fine and just moved on. He never retried that part. And when he released it, everyone said this jump is impossible. I've only gotten it one in a hundred times. And he went through and he said, oh shit, that's really hard to do and I just got lucky the first time. So I would definitely not go too crazy with dev tools, and I would definitely make sure that you play through the game at least a few times to make sure you know what parts are actually really difficult or not. Yeah. I just have a question. Yeah. Uh, not that either of these are good choices for first games, but would a top-down bullet hell or a side-scroller with combat be easier? Um, which of the two would be easier? Uh, that kind of depends. I know a side scroller with combat has a lot of um, 
like game state things that you have to deal with where like uh, when you're hitting an enemy, I'm, I'm assuming this is like a melee, a melee game, like, uh, well, like Street Fighter or something, I guess. I was thinking like a super simplified version of Rogue Legacy or something like that. Okay, yeah, it's, there's, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of parts where you have to, I guess, sort of interrupt enemies and they can interrupt you where you're hitting people and they're in hit lag and whatnot and they're going back and forth. So that might be kind of difficult. Um, I know a bullet hell is very easy to do because, I mean, what, all you really have to do is set up the projectile and then you can just go crazy and spam it wherever you want. It's also so it's really easy to set up. Like you don't have to worry about level generation or anything. Like even the first level, like you just make a screen as a background and UI is the simplest UI there is. You just have numbers displayed for whatever you want. Um, yeah. I, I'd say a bullet hell is actually your I, I'd say a bullet hell is probably easier of the two, but... But I, I think they're both definitely doable. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one would probably take more time, but if you're more interested in it, maybe it's... Yeah. You can always simplify things down if you really want to stick with one thing, like if you really wanted to do this slide scrolling fighter, just simplify everything down, like uh, if you get hit, that's it type of thing. Uh, I don't know. There's, the more you think about one idea, the more simplicity you can find out of it. Uh, that once you start coming up with, okay, when X happens, numbers one through five have to happen. What if we just said number one always happens? So. So yeah, I mean, you could definitely pick the second pick, the second choice. You know, as long as as long as you tailor it to what you've done before. If you haven't done game development before, simplify it a lot so that you can definitely get it done so it's doable. All right. So, did anybody else have a first game that they've done? My uh, my first game was Pong, but I, I challenged myself not to use a <coughs> tutorial or anything. It was a lot of fun. Took me a while. And I like I did it during school and. Like play with friends, except I tell like up is to go up, down is to go down, and then W and A, so you can have like global multiplayer. Mm -hmm. Except I didn't tell them that you could go left and right. <laughs> the battle. So like in the middle of the game, I would like shoot over because it goes, it went pretty fast. You'd like shoot over and like totally dunk on them, and so <laughs> it added like a whole new level to the game, which it was a lot of fun. I think the thing that I learned the most from that is less from making Pong and more from like all of the games before, not all of them, like a few of them before it, that just like totally petered out on me. Like, I just really don't care about this anymore. I want to finish it. Or like you come across something that you don't know how to fix or how to write code for. Like, I think it was in eighth grade, like, I don't know how to do vector maths. I'm an eighth grader. What do you mean? <laughs> oh no. So it's like important to know your abilities and maintain control of your scope. And I think with, from Pong specifically, the, the, most thing, well, the biggest thing I learned was edge cases. There's a lot of them, and it sucks. Like, what if the ball is going 600 miles per hour, and your paddles are like the width of the screen? Is the ball going to shoot through the paddles or not? Yeah. You got to like account for all of that. That's, that's definitely an important thing that a lot of people miss is edge cases of taken, taken to the extreme. Yeah. Make sure that it's still managed because I mean, and that's what playtesting tends to be a main feature for. Yeah. Also, it sounded like you, you kind of got an idea of uh, like maybe next time I should add instructions at the beginning. Yeah. Because <laughs> it, the people playing, which playtesters will call them, are uh, realize that hey, I don't know, I didn't realize that was yeah. a thing. That's my last game jam game that I did with Connor. We. We had a tutorial, but there was one part of it where everyone just seemed to go through without reading the text at the top. And it was that you could restart. And it was, it was like a puzzle game where you're kind of, that's a good way. It's like a maze where you have to collect the keys, but you can't, uh, you can go back to your previous spot, but you can't, it's like snake in the sense that you can't hit uh, other places you've been unless it's you're just backing up. So being able to restart is really easy when you get halfway through the puzzle and realize you didn't do the wrong path. But I realized that uh, people didn't 
didn't see that part of the tutorial, so <laughs> maybe I should make it more noticeable. Yep. Or just have to show it after so many times. All right, so then I guess jumping into the other part of it was, okay, who here has an idea of what they want to do for their first game? Because I just want to run through some ideas and how reasonable they are. Yeah. No, you're, you're fine. Just a two-square game, like playing the playground two-square. Like a what? Like four-square? Yeah, four-square, two-square. Oh, that's sort of thing. Okay. The ball, like a DC or something. Is it, would it be like 3D or 2D or? <coughs> That's what I can't figure out right now. Like, oh. I literally just thought of it. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's how all my best ideas come out. Yeah. I, come, I think of something forever and then three seconds before the thing happens is, yeah. let's just do this. And I know that I have to use like colliders and stuff mm -hmm. for it, but I'm not quite sure whether it would be easier to do it in 2D or 3D, but I have no most experience in 3D. I've not yet made a 2D game. Yeah, then I'd probably suggest just going with 3D, yeah. just because, you know, get some get some experience with one thing mm -hmm. before trying to jump around to too many things that you want to make sure you've got something hammered down. But yeah, that's that sounds. I mean, it sounds very doable for sure. Um, sounds like it probably wouldn't take so much time. You'd get tired of it, and probably bail. Yeah, it's pretty. It's it, that is a good idea for a first game. Yeah, that is a, that is a good idea. Yeah. I, I, you got you got Jake's seal of approval. <laughs> if you if you don't get that and you make a first game, you're you're fired. You're out. You're out of the club. Wait, I got fired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have a booth at Career Fair tomorrow. <laughs> Is that third one? I don't know. Anybody else? Because I've got. I mean. Ideas for the first Just game. random ideas, yeah. Uh, Star Fox clone. Okay, Star, Star Fox. Fox. Yeah. Have you done much with game dev before? Uh, I've worked with Unity a bit. Okay. I'm in this endless cycle of like a month of trying to learn and then stop for like a year, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I think the mechanics of that game wouldn't be that hard, but a game like that, you can kind of just picture level after level after level. So time-wise, it might uh, it, it might creep up on you, and, and you realize you're only halfway to getting like the first level or something, and, and you want to make five levels. So if you want to do something like that, it would be good to just say, "All right, I just want like one really basic level. I don't need to go all the way and like have five levels and a big boss at the end." Like. It, it, just keep it, keep it simple, especially like you said, it, it's really easy to go in spurts, especially when you're in college. Uh, so being able to do it in a couple of weeks, like think, all right, how can I break this down into uh, a doable amount? And it also depends on how interested you are in it, because yeah. you know, if this is if if you're really jazzed about making this, you know, it'll probably be easier to work on it for longer and make a longer game. So, mm -hmm. one yeah. of the things, though, uh, this wasn't I didn't do an iterative game like that, <coughs> level upon level for my first game, but uh, games like that uh, can spark your inspiration later on. That if you get that first level done, you can just copy and paste it change things up and make a second one. And if you play it like six months down the line and get this new idea that you could use the base mechanics of it, like a new level, like a lava level or ice level or something like that, you've got that existing game that you can just puzzle piece in new things to do. So it's really a really good, easy to add on to it. So it can go That's a really good point. I, I guess I didn't mean for your first game, like set that out, and then you can always add on to it. But if you have it in your mind like that you want to do five or ten levels, it makes it really hard to feel like you're actually close because the the timing like takes forever to get to that that start. And once you get there, you can go really fast. But if you're like this far along in your time frame, but you, you haven't 
made very many like levels or anything, it, it feels like you're <coughs> not making very much of your game right now, even though time-wise that's a lot of the process, which is something you see once you finish uh, your first game, which is why it's so important to, to finish that and to follow through with it. You see that you see that picture up there? That cube runner? That works pretty similarly to a Star Fox like game, except it doesn't have the vertical movement, but you could very easily do that. So if if you're interested, you should probably uh <coughs> come to the workshop. <coughs> Shilling. Okay. <laughs> um, somebody else. Yeah. Okay, so you ever play uh, the Silent Hills uh, playable teaser? The what? The Silent Hills playable teaser. I, ha I haven't personally played it, but so I've seen like plenty of it, yeah. It's basically a hallway that you walk over and repeats. Mm -hmm. But it's supposed to be super scary and certain like, scary things happen. But instead of being a uh, repeating hallway where spoofs happen, it's just a pitch black corridor that you just walk down and it never ends. So it's all on your head. Like it's just, it's just a, literally there's no goal but go forward, and it's in a pitch black corridor, and you think that somebody's gonna have it, but it never does. Wait, I Um. I mean, that's a good. That's a. That's just a decent, just like joke game idea, but maybe. Hmm. Well, Maybe not as your first game because I find that. Uh, I mean, if you have the passion for it, if you're really interested in, it, go for it. Do you want to tell your grandchildren that was your first game? <laughs> <laughs> when you're when you're a trillionaire as the greatest game dev game developer in the world, do you really want to show? Start that's <laughs> you do have to start somewhere. That's fair. That's all just a scheme to get them to come back and play this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's. All joking aside, that's definitely doable as, as your first game. And that would be good experience with setting up atmospheric things yeah. and environmental stuff. And where, yeah, that'd be a great experience getting lighting set, getting, you know, you can probably mess with sound design and or textures. music design, textures. Yeah, so get your Pure setting. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And once you finish, you can easily get your experience, like learning how to make a menu. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know if you would need a tutorial. Well, you do that, that just to deceive the, the player, and then they go in and nothing happens. And then I could, <laughs> <laughs> I could, I could definitely see that as also being good practice for like a camera. So instead of just moving forwards like you're on a track, maybe add like footsteps movement to the camera. Yeah. Like I could see that as just good practice for that as well. So. In what? The camera thing that you mentioned? Camera shakes. It's like natural movement. Really easy. Dope. All right. Uh, we're gonna let you guys out pretty quick, pretty quick here. Uh, so last thing, reminders, there is a workshop this weekend for the basics in coding in Unity. We'll be making a cube runner style game. Um, come check that out Saturday, 1, 1 p.m. Probably won't go till three in Carver. Um, Again, let us know if you want to show something at the start of the meetings. It can be concept art. It can be just the idea. It doesn't have to be something that you've put a lot of work into yet, necessarily. And then we'll still have t-shirts next week, so bring money if you're interested. If you want to buy one today, just come up here after the meeting and hopefully have money. We won't be giving these away, sorry. So, uh, dues are not due anytime because they're still totally optional. Um, but yeah, it's it's they just get you prizes at game jams and possibly food at events, depending on if we ever get funding for anything. Um, you support the club, let us. Yeah, that's true. If you if you support the club, then you'll definitely be able to. So you kind of get a discount on t-shirts. Is the way we're doing. Yeah, you can also. Well, I mean. Well, if you do it at the same time. I mean, it's not technically a discount on t-shirts, but yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I just kept going.